Warm greetings with the high 10. It is Everyday Shenanigans on this Tuesday, May 12, 2020. Praying that you all are safe out there. We want to bring you, uh, I would like to bring you a very odd story out of Nashville, Tennessee, my state. Oh, mercy. I'll let you guys be the judge of this said information. And please, honey, leave your comments below for the queen. This story is brought to you by the New York Times. Okay. It was updated yesterday. National NAACP. NAACP. You know what that means. N-A-A-C-P. Okay. Leader finds bullseye in his yard. A suspect has been charged in the case, and the police have set up a mediation between the Reverend Keith Caldwell and a police officer who he said was dismissive of the matter. And there's also a picture of the said bullseye in the picture. And this is the Reverend Keith Caldwell found a plastic target with protruding bristles outside his home in Nashville on Saturday night. I'm dead. It's on a green stand, so you all be the judge of this. This is crazy. But anyway, here we go. The leader of the Nashville chapter of the NAACP walked out of his house on Saturday night to find that someone had propped up a bullseye target in his yard. NAACP, excuse me. Some of you may not know what that is. So the chapter president... The Reverend Keith Caldwell called the police, but according to an account that Mr. Caldwell posted on Facebook, the officer who came to his house did not take the threat seriously. The officer, he wrote, shrugged and said that he thought the target was pretty cool. Quote, unquote. I informed him that I am the local NAACP president and have deep concerns about what this could mean for the safety of my life and the lives of my family members, Mr. Caldwell wrote. He said he had told the officer that it concerned me that he was so flippant about the matter. The Metropolitan Nashville Police Department said in a statement on Monday that it was seeking to determine who had placed a target in Mr. Caldwell's yard and that it was reviewing the interaction between its officer and Mr. Caldwell, which it referred to as an apparent disagreement, quote unquote. Later Monday, it said that the officer, Eric McCoy, told the department's Office of Professional Accountability, which investigates complaints, that he meant no disrespect to Caldwell and understands how his words were misconstru misconstrued. The department said that the two would meet in a medi uh, mediation session. Imagine that. Can't wait to hear about how that goes. It also said that using surveillance footage, it had identified the man who had placed the target in the yard. The police said the man, Roy E. Brown, 63, knew Mr. Caldwell and thought the plastic gang target resembled a flower that would look nice. Mr. Brown received a citation charging him with intimidation, a misdemeanor, the police said. Mr. Caldwell reached by telephone on Monday night, said, from the information I have, it does not appear to be a racialized act. I am advocating for it to be heard in mental health court, he said. Mr. Brown could not meet immediately be reached for comment on Monday night. The department described the target, a bullseye with plastic bristles, propped up on a stand in the yard as a game available from Walmart. Mr. Caldwell was initially concerned that the target might have been placed in the yard as an act of intimidation because of his role as NAACP president, the police said. Under his leadership, Mr. Caldwell said the NAACP chapter has worked with the chief of Nashville's police department on oversight and threats toward African Americans. Mr. Caldwell also said he had been lobbying the chief to make body cameras mandatory for officers. In 2018, after a white national officer fatally shot a black man who was running away from him, the NAACP chapter was part of a coalition that proposed the creation of a civilian board to investigate allegations of police misconduct. The board was approved in a referendum that year. Mr. Caldwell, 52, said that although he has previously been the target of racial slurs and threats, he had not received any such threats lately before the bullseye showed up in his yard. Not any more than the organizer of a community organization has had for the past 20 years, he said. The N-word and watch yourself, but nothing having stuff put in my yard. Mr. Caldwell, and that's quote unquote. Mr. Caldwell, the pastor at a United Methodist Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, said he called the non-emergency number of the police department after he and a friend found the bullseye on Saturday to make it a matter of record. Mr. Caldwell said he expected an officer who was white, and I was so curious to his nationality, to write up the details of the incident and provide a report number. 
I really felt he maybe needed some sensitivity training, Mr. Carwell said. He just did not think it was a big deal. And that is the said information from the New York Times. So let's go here. Funny how the article lets us know that the target came from Walmart, as if that means anything. I guess to basically tell us that it was just a game. Well, we know it's a game, and it was probably a game to whoever put the damn target over the man's yard. And when you see the photograph, you will see that there is a chain link fence. So this said man who put that over there, put that target over the fence knew better and knew it was not a flower and knew it was not cute. Roy E. Brown, 63. You knew better, Mr. Brown, than to go over there rambling over by that man's yard, putting that target over there, and it isn't and it doesn't matter if it came from the Dollar Tree, Walmart. Come on, y'all, let's quit playing. You had a reason why you put that there. Now, obviously, you've had some type of disagreement with Mr. Brown and or you don't like some things he has been saying or doing in the community as the NAACP. I don't know if you are a neighbor of Mr. Uh, Caldwell. They didn't specify or state that Mr. Brown lives on the street, but there is some discord mentally. As Mr. Caldwell says. And I do agree with Mr. Caldwell stating that the white officer needs sensitivity training. Perhaps he does. Perhaps the entire force needs sensitivity training. Because my thing is this. Why would you even make a comment that you thought it was cool? You see that the man is in a high regard. In a high standing position. And yes, I say that. So why even make a remark, period? Just don't say nothing. You see, that's a, a lot of people's problems. They talk too much. They don't know when to be quiet. They have to have the last word. Now he's gone and reported you to your department. And now you say, oh, I didn't mean any harm. And now the police department wants to say it's a statement. Oh, it's just a minor disagreement. But we're going to have mediation. You want mediation because you want him to drop his complaint or what? Erase it or downplay what the officer said. The officer shouldn't have said anything. Point blank. You should have wrote down the statement from Mr. Caldwell and turned the statement in and let that ride. But you had to say something smart. And now you got to have a mediation. So let's think about that said situation. How is that going to work out? During the mediation between the two. Is he going to apologize to Mr. Caldwell? And then what's going to be the take on the next time Mr. Caldwell has a problem in the city of Nashville, Murfreesboro, or anywhere else? Y'all see where I'm going with that? Because you know the police can be dirty. And they can be lax in their rendering aid to you. Because you've been a problem or been a or problems with your local police department. I'm just saying. And as far as Mr. Roy Brown, why did you put that target over the fence? You don't like Mr. Caldwell? You all have some issues? What is the deal? Because they didn't specify that these two have ever had a physical or verbal altercation. He says it resembled a flower. That's why he put it there. Then you got the police saying it's cool. Well, hell, maybe the police officer and Mr. Brown are friends. Quit playing. You know, I'm just throwing out some old sly humor. But anyway, sarcasm. Excuse my manners. Very odd story out of Nashville, Tennessee. Well, I'm going to pray that this issue is resolved. Mr. Caldwell and the said officer. That they come to a resolution of the situation. Oh. Uh, and the fact that he's his name has been put in this in this article here, you already know that's not going to fare very well because it's just like what I said. Mr. Caldwell going to the authorities and letting them know about the comments. I just hope that nothing transpires between Mr. Eric McCoy and Mr. Caldwell later down the road if Mr. Caldwell needs help. Mr. McCoy won't be the one on the scene. You see where I'm going with that? Okay, just 
narrowing down all points. Mr. McCoy, the officer, Caucasian, Mr. Caldwell, African American, hope you all can uh, come to a uh, reasonable conclusion to this dispute when you go to your mediation. And I'm praying that no one else puts anything else in Mr. Uh, Caldwell's yard as, as for Mr. Uh, Roy Brown, who is the culprit. Uh, I don't know what your issues are with Mr. Caldwell, but you need to resolve them as well. And you need to grow up because you know you didn't have no business going over private property, planting anything. Just stop all that. Do like everybody else do. Go on Facebook and tell the world you don't like Mr. Caldwell. Because you see, this is silly and asinine for you to be 63 years old, trampling on people's property, putting stuff on there, talking about it look like a flower. Quit playing. Everybody's grown. Everybody needs to act grown and act accordingly before somebody gets hurt. And that's what I'm praying, is that this won't be a part two. And I have to come back with a part two video. Praying for Nashville, Tennessee. Praying for all states and abroad. God bless all of you. I hope you're safe. Like, share, and subscribe. Drop your comments below. Thanks for joining me. Mask up, glove up. Put the appropriate items in the appropriate receptacles. You all stay safe out there. Have a blessed week. Praying for all of you. Shiny V, how you doing out there in Texas? Haven't heard from you in a while. Praying that you and your family are okay. Praying for all of you. Thanks for joining in, tuning in, uh, liking the videos. Thank you for my subscribers, all new subscribers. Hope I don't disappoint you. And if I do, then oh well, you know, that is life. As they say, we can agree to disagree. Thank you all for joining me. This is Everyday Shenanigans. Bye-bye.